Okay guys, uh, today's video is going to be on programming the Midland Base Tech 3 repeater. Um, this is going to involve uh, a couple different programs that need to be installed to get it going. Um, to start off with, we need to find out which version of P20 of the Base Tech 3 software that we need. And we find that by looking at our firmware version and um, that'll dictate which uh, version of uh, software we use. To get the firmware version, um, when you're um, booting the uh, repeater up, you'll see a flash on the screen here uh, as it's booting up. And in the upper left-hand corner will be the uh, firmware version um, to let you know uh, which version of software to use. So in this case, we're going to be using the 71BS firmware, so we'll use the 2.3642 um, software. Now, um, to get this uh, software installed, we have to do uh, uh, a .NET Framework uh, Windows install program first. And <clears throat> the most important part is make sure you do not plug in your programming cable to the laptop until you have the USB drivers installed. There is an embedded circuit board inside the programming cable um, that as soon as you plug it in, even without being connected to the radio, Windows will try and install a driver for it if you don't beat it to the uh, punch and uh, have it installed previously. And sometimes it's impossible to get Windows to shake shake loose and give up control. Um, I had one laptop that just plagued me. About every other time I tried to run the software, it tried to install the Windows driver instead of the Midland driver. So, um, and it was all because I made the mistake of plugging in the programming cable first. So, um, that being said, let's go ahead and get to the uh, uh, the the program installs. Um, like I said, we're going to start off with doing uh, uh, this uh, .NET Framework 3.5, and here is the uh, the info on it. Here you can go down to uh, Microsoft and do a, a search and download the file. Um, so we're going to start by firing that up and let it run, and we're going to go. Let me get file Windows update. So yes, we'll let it do in it. We'll let it uh, install, and then after it installs, we'll install the uh, USB drivers, and then uh, the radio program, and then the uh, the tone remote uh, board program. Uh, our repeater has the built-in tone remote board. Um, and it is a separate uh, Windows program that controls it. So we'll get to that in just a bit. So let the uh, .NET finish here. There are many different versions of the .NET framework <coughs> and most of them don't work. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the version that you'll need. If you install the uh, latest one, it doesn't work. Uh, I tried that. Uh, and I went back and tried to find uh, the actual 1.41 uh, that it, uh, it calls for. Um, let me, uh, I'm just going to show you what it, uh, what it looks like here. If you try and install the program without it, you get this little, uh, warning here saying it needs a 1.4322, but you can't get that. So that's why you got to go to the, the 3.5.
I just recently had my uh, laptop wiped out so this is a uh, this is I'm doing it in real time here this is my first time installing the software since it's been wiped so uh, hopefully it works and uh, oh boy I think it said I needed to restart we'll find out here real quick stand by Ah, nope, I didn't need a restart. So, um, yeah, if, if it didn't see that, it would give you the little warning here, but it's happy now. So let me go ahead and, and do that. And I like that. And just the default. There we go. Yes. And um, it's been successfully installed. Great. So we're going to close that out. And, um, oh, let me come over here and do the, uh, the drivers. And they just do a couple little flashy screens and disappear, and that's about it. And then last but not least, we're going to do the uh, Tone Remote Board setup. So, we'll come over here. And next, next, yes. And we're complete. Okay, great. All right, so uh, we got the programs installed. So uh, let's uh, change gears and flip over to the uh, repeater. So stand by here. Okay, we're back at the uh, repeater itself. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here and uh, let it boot up. And if you look at the screen, you'll see. Uh, when it comes up, it'll give you a little flash. There it is. There's a firmware version there, 71 BSC. So um, here is our programming cable. And like I said, it's got a little built-in board inside it. So um, it's, it's hot as soon as you plug it into your laptop. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it into my laptop and uh, let it uh, get familiar with it and then we'll fire up the program and uh, read the radio so okay there's your USB uh, click and uh, the good news is that when I plugged it in um, I didn't see any activity over here in the in my uh, computer screen talking about a uh, new device or anything like that so it was uh, already uh, ready for it when I plugged it in. So uh, we should be uh, ready to, to read it. And uh, what you're going to want to know is, is that um, um, when I plugged in my, my programming cable, it created a uh, virtual uh, serial port. And, um, and I want to show you, if, if you go into your uh, control panel, and then go into device manager you can look at the com ports and um, you'll be able to see it and there it is USB serial port com7 so just remember com7 because we'll need to know that when we go into the uh, Midland program here but like I said it's there ready to go so we'll go ahead and uh, get out of this and close that now let's go ahead and start up the uh, the Midland uh, program here and see if we can uh, do some reading action. Midland programmer's new and we want the base tech uh, program right here. So we'll select it. And we'll let it come up. There it is. Okay, fantastic. So we'll move it over here out of the way so you can see the action. And um, we'll go ahead and go into the, uh, the next screen here. And this is where we need to uh, select our, uh, our proper COM port. And there it is. You can see it down there, COM7. Okay. So um, we'll go ahead and go to our main screen. And now we should be re ready to uh, read the radio. So let me go ahead and plug in the programming cable. Uh, these uh, radios have two programming ports, one in the back and one in the front uh, for the radio. They're both DB9s and they both work uh, the same. There's no difference between them, they're just parallel. Um, 
the port on the uh, for the tone remote board is the DB25 on the back and we'll get into that as soon as we're done with the radio here so uh, we're going to start off here in the main uh, screen and let's go ahead and read the radio and get what's out of it and um, this is uh, as soon as you see the progress bar you know everything's working um, any troubles at all and you'll get stopped at this screen it won't even try so this is a uh, very good so we've read it okay and here we can go exit and now uh, this P25 set doesn't have a whole lot of options you can see all the the encode scan memory all this stuff is all grayed out because those features aren't available uh, we can go and look at the, uh, the, the channel screen here and see some um, uh, typical setups. Um, I've been using this, uh, I did a, another video about pre-emphasis and de-emphasis and here you can see the, the flat and the emphasize 190 here um, and this is where it gets the audio, uh, the flat, the normal. When it says normal, it means pre-emphasized and de-emphasized. So, and uh, this is also where you can uh, uh, select uh, whether you want to go analog, uh, digital, or mix mode. Uh, most people uh, run in mix mode so that they can uh, do either or and easily transition over to the digital so that when it comes uh, for the transition time, um, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, going up to the repeater and doing any reprogramming. So um, all of these uh, other ones, uh, they're, they're just your typical um, uh, uh, you know, programming setup as far as whether you want to be a repeater, your CTCSS tones, uh, your NAT codes if you're doing digital, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, no surprises there. Um, if I get out of here and I uh, let me move this down so it's a little bit more on the screen so you can see it. Get back some. I want to show you the. Uh, the make sure I didn't miss any of this stuff up here. But anyway, um, uh, get that right in the middle. There we go. Uh, yeah, just your typical uh, screen that you would uh, put in your normal values here. Nothing big there. In the miscellaneous. Um, all these things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, the the help program uh, on this is 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 pretty good. Uh, they have uh, uh, just about everything uh, covered, um, and you'll get a nice verbal explanation. So whatever you, you want to look at, you can uh, you know display and then, um, so have you go through all these. Like I said, they're pretty much self-explanatory. Um, so that's miscellaneous. Then you got your P25. Um, I showed in the inhibit uninhibit uh, video about setting this up. So that's all pretty much uh, self-explanatory. And then the last thing is the uh, you want to make sure you uh, you save your file, and uh, and that's you know also very very typical there too so um, pick your folder and save it and uh, yeah I think this is um, uh, pretty much your um, uh, your main knowledge that you need to know uh, for programming the repeater itself now uh, I want to go ahead and get out of this and go into the uh, the tone remote program um, and show you how that works. So let me uh, end here and yes, I want to exit. And for um, for to do the tone remote board, we need to uh, take our same uh, DB9 uh, uh, programming cable and we want to. Uh, add either 
uh, just a straight adapter, 9 to 25 adapter, or a lot of people have the 9 to 25, uh, let me get this in the thing so you can see it, 9 to 25 uh, pin cable that you can use as the adapter. So we'll plug in the male to the female uh, here, and then on the back of the radio, we'll plug in the DB25 to the connector to the back. Uh, now, if you don't have the tone remote board option, um, this connector in the back does something totally different. It's, uh, it's an accessory plug, so make sure you know whether you have uh, which version you have. And it's real easy just to open up the radio and um, look inside and you'll see the if it's got that option board it'll be installed back here in the corner. So you no doubt about that. Alright, so uh, once you've got your programming cable uh, connected there, now we can go ahead and go into the tone remote. And I want you to notice that the tone remote uh, program is not listed under Midlands. Um, it's got its own little name here. Let's see if we can find it. There's a see if I open up the Midland programmers. No, nope, no tone remote. You got to go down to where it says tone remote programmer. There it is. So and oh, we had a problem with that. Let's see what's going on with that. Oh, there it goes. Whatever issue it had. Uh, it recovered. So um, uh, now, uh, like I said, this is a, just a completely separate program. Uh, all the uh, functions are self-explanatory and just like uh, just like in the radio here. But let's go ahead and uh, uh, read it and see what's in it. Uh, we don't actually use the. Uh, this port uh, for ours because we're just a standalone repeater, but uh, I have seen them used uh, before. So we see we got a we got a progress bar. We successfully read it, and here's all the stuff that's in it. And uh, whatever, if you wanted to change something, say you wanted to go from four wire to two wire, great. And then whatever changes that you uh, end up uh, doing. Um, then you can hit it back in the uh, uh, the right and uh, go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and just change it to two wire here for kicks and grins and write it back. And see we get a serial uh, transmit progress there and a resetting and you can see our version there and. Uh, Yep, now we're all back to uh, we're back to normal. So um, this is the tone remote program. Just remember, you got to have that uh, DB9 to 25 adapter, and uh, it's uh, it's it's really easy program. Uh, there are no tricks in it. I've never had any issues with it at all. So all right, let's close that out and. Um, I think that'll finish it. There's your your basic run through. Um, just to recap, we had to install the the, the Microsoft .NET uh, 3.5, um, and we had to uh, oh, let me hover over that to get the details. After we did that, then we went into the um, the USB driver um, uh, and got that installed. Then we did the Base Tech 3 and then finished up with the uh, Tone Remote. So, alright, um, I hope that helps and we'll see you soon.